actually the real magic happens in the smaller groups because like I don't have the first clue about biotech but what I do know is when you get two people who know about biotech into the same room you're much more likely to have a meeting of minds so it's all about community building because business at the end of the day boils down to trust people and trust so i'm trying to build um, and curate communities where people trust each other and then transact with with each other welcome to Ailey fashion lovers chat show thank you very much for tuning in today in this episode, I'll be speaking to Mark Jarrett. He's the founder of Virtual Power Networking Platform. He'll be here to tell us how he has been using his magical skills to empower his community and how we can also use his skills to empower our community. So he'll be discussing with us how he has been empowering people to network online and um, how this can have a very good impact in our business. Do not forget to like and share and subscribe and um, feel free to DM me if you have any topic you would like me to talk about. So, please stay tuned and keep on watching. Good afternoon, Mark. Good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to Ailey Fashion Lovers Chat Show. I'm glad to be here. I'm honored, in fact. <laughs> I'm so delighted you're here today. I'm delighted to be here. So um, you are a master or mistress of dissemination on, on, on social media. <laughs> well, mm. so Mark, can you tell me more about yourself, please? Where to begin? Um, well, when people ask me what I do for a living nowadays, I just say three words, and that's I connect dots. So I've always enjoyed uh, connecting people. It's kind of hardwired into my DNA. And um, when I was employed many years ago, uh, I, I was often reprimanded quite rightly for chatting too much. So now I'm putting that gregarious side of me to good use okay. by uh, facilitating introductions, as you, as you well know. Um, so um, as part of that work, I, I run 140 WhatsApp groups. Wow. One of them is Fashionable Fashionistas, uh, which is effectively, uh, you know, the one that you've taken ownership of. Each WhatsApp group has got its own theme. It might be nanotechnology, biotech, education, powerful women. Did you see who joined Powerful Women last night? Oh yes, you told me about it. That was... Um... <laughs> Desiree Bell. Yeah. Who used to work for Barack Obama, no less. Exactly. And he follows me on Twitter. Um, I don't know why, but um, anyway, so Obama has been featuring quite a lot in my life uh, recently. Mm. Mm. Have you ever met him? No, I haven't. I haven't Nor have I. I'd, I'd love to, though. He's okay. really em he comes over as a really empathetic individual and so eloquent. He speaks so beautifully. That's what I do. My background is uh, financial services, banking, futures broking. But I spent the bulk of my career in telecoms and I was first to market with those ringtones and logos. If you're old enough to remember them, they only work with Nokia. But back then, Nokia had 50% market share. So it was called Logo Paradise. And I had the first to market advantage. But it just exploded and then everyone everyone copied it. And I remember about three months later, I, I bought the Daily Star, which you probably don't read, but it was full of, uh, there were 14, one fourth, full page ads, just with these logos and ringtones. It went nuts. Um, so that was a, a success and then 
few years later, I launched a celebrity chat line service so people could call and speak to celebrities to raise money for good causes. So normally with something like that, you launch it in the UK and then take it to the United States. But I did it the other way around. I launched it in the United States with the view to launching it here. And I started with what the Americans call Z-listers. Yeah, low hanging fruit, reality TV type people. And it was everywhere for a while because it combined technology and celebrity. And the fact that Dina Low, oh, sorry, uh, Lindsay Lohan's mother and father were on there, but not Lindsay herself. And the mother, Dina, was charging five dollars a minute more than the father, so that got tongues wagging. So it was on ABC, Howard Stern, <coughs> CNN, Wendy Williams. It got a lot of publicity, but it didn't really. Uh, work out like I wanted because the celebrities kept all the money. Uh, the whole point really was to raise money for good causes and they kept it all. Anyway, um, over the years I built up quite a, quite a large network and now I, uh, uh, I, I'm a, uh, a networking uh, enthusiast and uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm teaching other people how to network virtually and I've been extolling the virtues of um, virtual networking long before coronavirus came along. It's got huge advantages over in-person networking, not least the environment, because we're not pumping a load of pollutants into the atmosphere by driving or flying to places. And the globality of it, you know, if you go to a networking event in London, you're only going to meet people from the London area. But online, it literally is, you know, the world is your oyster. So, uh, yeah, and I've always been a globalist and uh, I, love it. I love it. In fact, I find that local networking events aren't really much benefit to me because I can't really help the local window cleaner. Uh, and, and she can't help me, so uh, I, I love the the global aspect of virtual networking. Wow, well done. This is a very great, it's quite a very intense career. I think, yeah, I, I'm developing a, um, a reputation as being a, it's a new, it's a new career, definitely. Um, and I'm developing a reputation as being a connector. Even Facebook are endorsing me for my networking skills, which is quite humbling. Wow. Uh, to be endorsed by a beer moth like, like Facebook. But, um, yeah, so I recently launched something called virtualpowernetworking.com. Yeah. And um, they, I offer 15 minutes for free to, to, to show people the basics to teach them what I do or they can hire me for one hour there's a one hour power hour where I teach people the methods and the techniques of, of, of networking virtually my main tools are perhaps not surprisingly whatsapp but also a twitter and of course linkedin so Moving forward, whenever um, someone is interested in joining my network, I will show them a menu, if you like, of all my groups. And if they select fashionable fashionistas, they will join that group. And then you will dive in there and give them a big, fat, juicy welcome, won't you? Of course. Cool. That's and then cool. it's all well and good. Hashtag social selling, build up the relationship. And then hopefully they will contract uh, engaging your services. That's the idea. At the end of the day, build up the relationships and then the money will come later. Because as you know, in the UK especially, it's terribly unfashionable to sell. That's true. That's true. Can you tell me what would happen if we don't network? If we didn't network, our, um, our, our existing network 
would remain as it is. It wouldn't increase in size. But I'm a great believer of what Freddie Mercury once said, the bigger the better in everything. Wow. And do you think the pandemic that happened recently, I know it's affected loads of um, networking events, and do you see it coming back soon, like face-to-face -face networking? Do you see it coming back on time? I think face-to-face -face networking in a global pandemic is both oxymoronic and counterintuitive. We are social animals. So to network with someone at two meters distance, it's a bit like dancing with someone at two meters distance. Um, I spoke to someone this morning, in fact, he said he's been to his first networking event and, and it was with two meter distancing. I said, how did he, how did it go? And he said it was rubbish. Um, so does that answer your question? Of course, it does answer. Okay. So you know, what you're trying to say, um, you don't see it coming back on time for now? So we have to say it is actually coming back in bits, strips and drabs right now. But sorry to sound gloomy, but I think there might there's a good possibility of a, a second wave, in which case, uh, it, I mean, it's already happening in Australia and elsewhere. Um, I hope I'm wrong, but if it does come back, then of course, then there's not going to be no more networking face to face anytime soon. But irrespective of that, I think people are genuinely frightened. Uh, I actually put a poll out on, uh, on LinkedIn a few weeks ago. Are you Corona nervous or Corona casual? And of course, typical for this country, it was split down the middle roughly. Uh, what do you, co what, are you Corona? Well, you're Corona casual, otherwise we wouldn't have met a couple of weeks ago, would we? Yeah. <laughs> I am if, Yeah. If you were corona nervous, you would have said, sorry, Mark, I can't meet you. Exactly. <laughs> I, I heard you created something which is about, it's called um, Pay What You Want. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, that's not mine. It's a guy called Max Rangely. Uh, and he was offered a scholarship by the LSE and he turned it down. <laughs> He's a member of three think tanks. Mm -hmm. and uh, he consults um, a member of parliament on blockchain, I think it is. A very clever guy. And it's the, the world's first pay-what-you-want marketplace. And pay-what-you-want has been around for years. I mean, when you think about it, a street busker is, is pay-what-you-want, or a donation button is pay-what-you-want. What-you-want is aimed at photographers, musicians, artists, uh, authors, anyone that's got Ill pixels that they want to turn into profit. Oh yeah. And when you think about it, there's a ton of people out there globally who are already offering free ebooks. Yeah. Well, Why not pull it on pay what you want? Even if you get just, just a quid, it's a quid you wouldn't have had before. And then you can upsell your other services once that uh, has been uh, purchase. So, um, I suspect a lot of your viewers um, do have photographs, cool photos, or um, maybe um, audio clips or, or books or what have you. Please go to paywhatyouwant.io and get uploading. And I will send the first person that uploads a picture or uh, a digital asset a packet of wine gums. To, to reward people, I give them wine gums. Do you like wine gums? Oh yeah, it's good. That's good. Yeah. So you might be the lucky winner. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so are you one of the? Are you a contributor in Pay What You Want? Yes, I'm helping develop that platform. Yeah, because I can see that you're quite associated with it. Well, if you go there, you'll see a picture of my pussy cat called Sweep. Yes. And uh, the the look is a photograph depicting my now deceased mother, uh, who was quite 
uh, photogenic. Yeah. And uh, my wife has also uploaded some uh, work on there, and so have some other artists uh, and musicians. So it's very exciting because it's at the very beginning of its of its journey. Um, Johnny, who you've met, um, gave me a very very well-known person's telephone number yeah. and I, I, I was going to get her on there to sing happy birthday yeah. and and then people could gift that um, as, as a cool way to say happy birthday but then I noticed she's no longer on whatsapp uh, to be honest but um, we need something like that to, to propel it into orbit do you know any 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 singers or that might be up for it um I can, I can, uh, I can research. Good. Research. So tell me, Mac, you know, in terms of uh, the virtual networking, I take it as you use that very skills to empower the community. Yeah, community building, because as I said, actually the real magic happens in the smaller groups, because like I don't have the first clue about biotech. But what I do know is when you get two people who know about biotech into the same room, you're much more likely to have a meeting of minds. So it's all about community building because business at the end of the day boils down to trust, people and trust. So I'm trying to build um, and curate communities where people trust each other and then transact with with each other. WhatsApp is all very good, but I think you will agree that when it's all text-based, it can be a bit uh, noisy and chaotic. And by taking things to the next level, that would be Zoom or Remo. And of the two, I actually prefer Remo. Remo is much better for networking than Zoom because with zoom you get put into breakout rooms which allow to networking mm -hmm. but you're at the behest of the organizer whereas with remo you can float around and and, and and go from table to table like you would in a real world networking uh, environment oh good so the remo because I, I got a little because I wasn't sure. I thought you designed a Remo. <laughs> no, that's a guy called Ho Yin in, in, in Hong Kong. And as you can imagine, a business is booming for him right now because of the um, pandemic. Um, Remo is um, one of just a very few uh, platforms that allow this kind of networking. It's really powerful. In fact, I just hosted an event all about gamification, augmented reality, and artificial intelligence on Remo. Mm -hmm. And it was fun. It was uh, very interesting. Um, yeah. Your creation, do you think it does help people in terms of their mental health as well? Well, we are um, social creatures. Um, I, I was speaking to a lady called Pandora recently, who um, she, she's an artist on super yachts, okay? And prior to lockdown, she was buzzing around, going to all these parties. And then she said, um, after um, several months of lockdown, she, she felt she'd lost the ability to communicate with groups. I, I, I would imagine that, um, She's not alone. I think there's a lot of people who um, have become a bit more anxious about socialising in, in, in uh, and networking in, in real life. As for mental health, generally, one man takes his life in this country every two hours. Hmm. Have you heard of Project 84? I'm not really, no. Okay, go to Twitter and look for hashtag Project 84. Last year, 84 silhouettes of men were placed on top of the old London weekend television building in central London. Very, very powerful image. Mm. <laughs> and the thing is, 
it's only going to get worse because men are hardwired to be providers and if we can't provide for our family we feel really rubbish and of course this um, COVID-19 is adding to the problem because unfortunately a lot of people are going to be losing their jobs. I know. I know. So mental health is, um, and it's great that people are talking about mental health much more openly now. But men, especially British men, are pretty rubbish about talking about their feelings. Exactly. I mean, um, I wouldn't say only British. You know, I'm, I'm from West Africa. I, I grew up to know that our men, our African men, which is Nigerians, they find it very, a bit like a taboo, like a stigma. If you talk about your mental health, which is the men, so they are more, a, bit, a little bit more enclosed. Mm. Talk about it. Even we, the female as well, they don't talk about it. If you talk about it, you either be slightly, not discriminated, but you know, stigmatized. So, weak. Yeah, exactly. The, 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 the man has a weak, has a weaker, you know, person. Mm. But for me, I think it's a good thing for the men and the women to, to talk more about it, men and women to talk more about it. Because the more you talk, the more hazed you will be. Absolutely. I'm an open book. I talk really openly about these, uh, these issues. Um, and for me, diversity and inclusion is really important in my groups to mix things up. And uh, also, have you heard of ORS? open, random and supportive. Yeah. It's the antithesis of corporate thinking because corporates tend to be really closed and secretive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm the exact opposite of that. So take it or leave it, warts and all, you know, no secrets. Yeah. So among your WhatsApp list, have you got like a specific one for men? Say for instance, um, cause what I have observed is um, I love, I'm someone who loves talking to people. So I've observed a lot of men um, who struggle with, um, you know, one or two things in their mind. So have you, did you happen to create a special group for men whereby no. they can collaborate, no. talk, uh, express their feelings? I yeah. created one for women called Powerful Women, which you're in. But um, there's also about a dozen men in there on purpose, because if I was to create a, a men only group, I think people would be up in arms. Um, I it, it, it doesn't fit into my ethos of um, inclusivity mm. and diversity. So the answer to your question is no, but I do have one about mental health. Okay, all right. that's good then. Yeah, so that's because um, you know, people can talk about uh, sometimes like marriage life, you know, how to know how to support your home and children talk about, you know. Mark, looking at the virtual networking, would you say it's a bit cost effective? Does it save people money? Or... It's free. Yeah. So like, say for instance, if you're meant to network with someone maybe in, um, you know, maybe Africa or America, Usually, you meant to buy your tickets to go there, pay for hotels. So now you can do things virtually. So, would you say it's a form of also saving some money in your pocket? Well, absolutely. I, you know, the two main ones I mentioned were the environment yeah. and the globality. But coming a very close third. In fact, you could make. It depends on how you look at it. But yeah. So I spoke to um, Sally Anderson um, uh, this morning. She's in New Zealand. That's 10,000 miles away. Very expensive airline ticket, hotels, all the rest of it. So yeah, you're saving a ton of money. And I, when I say free, it, it's because the internet has become a essential utility that we all have. There's no additional cost. So it is for all intents and purposes, it's free. Yeah. How cool is that? 
very very cool <laughs> it's quite good you know like say for instance myself i don't like taking a long flight like <laughs> maybe i can take a private jet okay <laughs> give it a few years <laughs> give it a few years <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. That's put me. That's why I've never been to Australia or New Zealand. It's, it's just the, the thought of um, sitting in an aircraft for God knows how long. It's not that appealing. Yes. Mm. So um, there is one other thing again. I understood that you help international business to grow their, you know, businesses. How how do you? Can you tell me tell me more about that, please? Well. If you go to my website, mjconsultancy.com, it talks about helping companies expand internationally with a focus on the United States, which, you know, it's the big one, isn't it? Then you've got China and Germany. I'm half German. I speak it fluently. And unlike um, human beings, UK companies can actually remain inside the world's largest trading bloc by creating a legal entity in in Germany or any of the other remaining EU 27 states. It's, it's nothing new. All the big boys have been doing it for many years now. But I've got quite a large network in Germany, so I can help UK companies remain inside um, Europe. Um, but I can't do the same for individual human beings. And I'm actually helping your partnerships, uh, which is a networking organization, very strong in the southwest of England, yeah. expand globally now because um, in some ways Corona has done them a favor yeah. because they used to do just local networking events in the southwest of England. Corona came along, they went online, four events a day, and now I'm helping them go global. So we've already done South Africa, um, Canada, United States, and this morning we did Aust uh, Aust the first Australia event. Ooh. Yes, oh, all cool, yeah. <laughs> so be Germany, uh, Germany um, next, and uh, Germany is not an English speaking nation, but because English is the world's global business language, then ich glaube, das ist kein Problem. Du? You know, our new young entrepreneurs, how, what advice would you give to them in terms of, um, uh, say, having to network online, virtual networking and stuff like that? Have you got any specific um, skills or magic words you'd like to give to them? Yes, mentor. Find a mentor, someone older than you, that's got the ex raw life experience of your industry and team up with her or him and listen to what they have to say. And uh, it's a symbiotic relationship. Often, often mentors can learn from the mentees as well, because the mentees are probably going to be gifted when it comes to things like Snapchat. Uh, an Instagram, whereas the older generation like me um, don't have that skill set. So the two, the mentor and the mentee, can complement each other. Mm, that's a good one. I like that. <laughs> my, my mentor is a guy called Eugene Guttersman, and he founded the New, New York Yellow Pages back in the 60s. And he's 91 this year. And he's sharper than most people half his age. And the reason he's so mentally fit, I think, is because he never stopped working. He continued to use his brain. Uh, and I, I love him dearly. Yeah. Um, so you use all your all the experience you've acquired for a very long time to mm. empower your community, people around the planet, all over the world, business-wise as well, just to bring them together in order to connect the dots. Yes, I've got all the continents covered apart from Antarctica. Wow. <laughs> Brilliant. So do you have expansion to Nigeria? 
Absolutely. I'm pretty passionate about trying to help people on the African continent. Um, and I've got the Out of Africa group. And um, in, in fact, um, our, our new friend, uh, Denise, she's now part of that. She's African American. <laughs> and uh, I think there is about 50 people in it now who are doing amazing things throughout Africa. Yeah. So um, if, if someone wants to start a business now and doesn't even know what to do or how to start, what would be your best advice you give to them? Well, say, for instance, you are their mentor. What would you say to them? Um, the first thing I would ask them is what do they feel passionate about and make sure that the, the business they want to start is congruent with their, uh, their passion. Because it really helps if you enjoy what you do for a living and most people don't. So you do, don't you? Yes, I do. I love talking. I love anything that makes me talk to people. So we're, we're, we're kind of in a minority because most people go to work because they, they have to um, support the family and put bread on the table and whatnot, but they don't necessarily love what they do. So if you love what you do, you definitely got a head start. Yeah. Well, <laughs> interesting. That's really good. So, um, have you got any magical words you'd like to give to my community? What would you, I mean, you've got about roughly, is it 35 years in, in terms mm. of working and all this, you know, everywhere, all over the world? What, what three words? <laughs> uh, I, I think, you know, the, the, I would say uh, it's actually on my mother's memorial bench. She passed away in 2007. And when I was a little boy, in fact, I've got it here. Hang on. I gave her this. Can you read that? It says today is the first day for the rest uh, of your life. Right. So I gave this to her when, when I was about seven or eight, and it's now on her memorial bench. And I think uh, it's quite powerful. Today is the first day for the rest of your life. Can you throw more light into that so we can understand that? Uh, okay, carpe diem, have you heard that? Seize the day, treat each day as if it's your uh, or your last. Be be passionate. Just be engaged. Just enjoy. Um, and and don't become a mental uh, a mental loafer. Keep your brain engaged. Continue learning. Continue engaging. Continue continue growing your network. And uh, if coronavirus doesn't bring out the inner hustler in you, you don't have one. Hmm. But you've got one. So you're going to be fine. Thank you. <laughs> Me personally, um, you've probably heard of the sportswear manufacturer Nike, right? Just do it. Just do it. So that's another thing I would uh, recommend. To save a horrible to-do list building up, just do it straight away. Just do it. That's one of my little slogans. Hmm. You give 15 minutes of uh, free consultation to a potential students. Hmm. Like, say for instance, can you give me two tips of what you would cover when they call you for the free 15 minutes consultation? I would give them a training on um, etiquette, how to behave when you're networking virtually, uh, and also list building okay uh which i think is quite important especially on twitter it's a great way to engage with uh, uh, communities of people okay. and find new new blood so to speak and which i'm constantly doing because otherwise the groups get too incestuous it's important to get new new people into the groups so that's what i do and then I introduce the, the, the newcomers to amazing people like you. Yeah. So 
Tell, how do you keep track of this? A lot of people say, God, how, how can you manage so many WhatsApp groups? But it's actually, I, I much prefer WhatsApp to email. Yeah. E email is a nightmare for me. I've got about seven or eight email addresses and it's so slow and then you get lost and all this. With WhatsApp, everything floats to the top. Yeah. So it's as long as I stick to the just do it ethos and, and respond immediately to people, then um, all is good. I don't find it um, that difficult. And occasionally, contrary to popular belief, I do take a digital detox. It's important for, for us to do that from time to time. I'm taking one tomorrow. And um, sure, there's going to be more messages when I get home in the evening. Uh, but uh, it's it's uh, no no big deal. And uh, by the way, viewers, you can use WhatsApp and should use WhatsApp on your computer. Simply go to web.whatsapp.com and then marry your smartphone with your computer. Because heaven knows we look at these things enough, and the the screen on a, on a smartphone is too small. Uh, and WhatsApp is much more effective when you use it on your laptop or your PC. Would you agree with that? Of course, I do agree with you in terms of that. Yeah. So, um, I use it a lot. Um, I used to, you know, I used to work, I did a bit of a PA work um, sometime. I mean, there was a thing you know, some time ago. I used to use the WhatsApp. So for instance, if I need to move some information, I just do copy and paste and move it onto elsewhere. So when I use it directly on the PC, it makes everything easier for me. And um, nowadays, I can see most business owners are using WhatsApp as another uh, marketing platform where you can advertise, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. And it's uh, at the moment it's still ad free, uh, and it, it's relatively easy to use. Uh, and it's part of um, Facebook's armory, of course. Owned oh, by cool. Facebook. Yeah. I'm going to give you a little fun factoid, if I may. Okay, please do. You you might not know, but I'll give you two. Wherever you are in the world, you can pay for Starbucks coffee in U.S. dollars. Okay. Okay, and the other one is, you have one hour, eight minutes and 16 seconds to delete a WhatsApp message in a group for everyone. Mm. After that, it remains in the group forever. And what I can also say to the viewers is, if you market someone you have to know, you have to know about him. Why? I'll tell you why. You see, if you want to start any business in life or you just want to have one or two ideas and you don't have the idea, market someone you can just call, even just call him and just give him your pitch. What he does, he will direct you without asking for a penny. All the mentors out there, they are charging £15,000 for a year just to mentor you. I, <laughs> I know them very well. 15k hundred thousand pounds a year just to mention you or you have mark here who will direct you and even hold your hands you never know you might even build a long-term relationship yeah I, I i reverse engineer it like in the gold group for example there's a gold trader called ulrika based in paris and there's a deal cooking if that deal comes good yeah. my commission will be more than some people um, in a year so um I, I'm, I'm taking the view uh, to make money uh, from the transactions mm -hmm. that come about as a result of the existence of the WhatsApp groups. Wow. Never a dull moment. Yeah, never a dull moment. I really enjoy that. And I can see, you see, um, your concept of putting all those uh, professionals together, mm. I can see you creating a platform whereby each people in, with their profession can easily create a course online and um, sit like example in the remote remote table and lecture people educate people virtually and they get paid for what they do
yes truly changing people's lives yeah yeah um and it's wonderful and it's wonderful to watch people connecting and forging those fr um relationships and friendships yeah. are being forged it's fantastic I, I think you have changed the world with your business concept your ideology in terms of bringing people together i'll tell you why the reason is some people who have met each other on that very platform will end up creating a lifetime friendship with absolutely, one person absolutely. Or other. that's or, already happened yeah or they might even end up getting married to each other you never know that's a blind dating form <laughs> well there, there, there is um dynamic daters um uh, that's one group i feel a little bit someone suggested i create a, a whatsapp group for dating um so yeah it's all yeah I, I think it's only a question of time until there's a union of some sort and that will be wonderful great talking to you enjoyed the sunshine this weekend it's going to be a sculpture yeah thank nice you very much. goodbye thank you for having me you're welcome. Bye. Ciao for now. Bye. Bye.